It's been a super busy day again here today. We started off this morning. Welcome to the Japanese Water Gardens. Let me give you a quick update, or not an update. Let me tell you what the hell we've been doing if you've not seen the previous videos. Morning, Matthew. Morning, Luke. Morning. What we're doing is we're putting in some new tanks. We've got four of these 500 gallon uh, plastic tank. We've put bottom drains into them. We've piped the bottom drain pipe work underneath the ground. That's gonna go through into our DIY filter system, which we're gonna be working on later today. To make sure that everything stays in place, we've used all of the spoil that came out of the trenches and we've mixed it up to whack it down for some hardcore. And then we're gonna go over the top with a covering of um, concrete to keep everything down and make it nice and tidy. Each of the tanks has a drain valve so they can be flushed independently. The drain valves are hidden in them little chambers there. And today, we're gonna be leveling all this concrete out and letting that set overnight. We've now completely buried all the pipe work and topped that off with a nice, uh, easy to level mix of sand and cement. We gravel in it, obviously. We're gonna be making our own filtration system for this pond at these two tanks here. So the water from all the ponds is coming down this single four inch pipe here. That's got to feed through into this tank. We're gonna use this tank primarily as a settling tank and we're gonna have two transfer pipes taking the water into this tank where we're going to have our mechanical filtration and our biological filtration. got two big transfer pipes between the settling tank and the biological two four inch pipes we've done two pipes because we just don't want much of a difference in levels between these two tanks we're not entirely sure how much water we're going to be able to bring through that k1 element that's going in the middle of there so we need two transfer points plenty of water can get through now we need to come up with a way of keeping the media off the bottom of this tank. The last thing that we want is the media sitting on top of that drain hole there and not being able to evacuate the tank efficiently. Normal media tray, we've even got a few pieces of this that uh, is recycled from another job. They're fastening it together with cable ties. Looks crude, but it's gonna work beautifully. And then to keep that off the bottom, what we're gonna use to keep that off the bottom, Matthew? Bricks. Bricks, not pipes. We thought about pipes, but we don't go for bricks. Sometimes the nice most simple solution is the best solution. We're not doing it on the cheap, we're doing it properly, but we're making the very best use of all the materials that we've got to hand. Mechanical <laughs> filter fixed in place. Quite pleased with how that's turned out. Perforated hundreds of holes in that using the angle grinder. We fastened these, I'm not gonna say the word that we call these, but I think they call them, what do they call them dildos or something? They're like a inlet um, strainer, pump inlet strainer. That should let the water through, but keep the K1 media contained in here.
Stuart's making us some nice wooden covers. That's going to prevent any possibility of any fish ending up down the back. Also, leaves to get in between these tanks that are driver's mad. So got to obstruct every little opportunity, block every little hole so there's no way any leaves or any fish or anything like that can fall down these banks. this valve the other day, yesterday Matthew, something came out of it and I thought that's weird, still don't remember, not got the middle side. When you first start using this K1 stuff it tends to want to float a lot so what a lot of people do is they toss in some potassium permanganate and stir it all in and that helps it to start sinking better and to start fluidizing properly. They call it chemically scarring it. And then they tend to leave it overnight, just sitting in the potassium with an air stone in there. And so it uh, strips all that surface off there. Some sort of residue left behind from the manufacturing process. But tend to make it a bit buoyant. We got four of these 2,500 litre tanks. We're gonna fit bottom drains into them, we're gonna fit overflow skimmers into them, and we're gonna run them into a DIY multi-stage gravity fed filter. But you're gonna to have to wait until next week to see that because I've gotta get home and start editing this video. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. If you like what you see, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, post a question or just say aye in the comments. It's bye for now from Lee at the Japanese Water Garden.